Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Proactivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino Modbus TCP to see more micro EA3. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So what we're going to do is take a look at the uh, P1AM examples that are posted on GitHub um, by Automation Direct. And these are the files here. And what we'll do is first of all take a look at our um, P1AM-100 uh, Modbus TCP server HMI uh, example. So we download that and what we do is we put it into our uh, IDE. So this is the actual program itself. And what we're going to do is do a little bit of modification here uh, on it. And we're just going to set our MAC address as well as our IP address for our application. So right now, usually we use productivity blocks. However, sometimes when you get into some of these advanced ones, it's best to just take your example and put it in. And what you'll notice is that the program itself or this program relies on a couple of dependencies and that being the Arduino RH or Arduino RS485 and the Arduino Modbus. Now both of these are, in, are libraries that can be added to the IDE. So if you go to uh, tools and then we go or sorry go to sketch and then go to include libraries and we go to manage libraries what we'll do is then type in Arduino RS485. And what you'll see is that we have to do the Modbus 485 as well as the Mod, our Arduino Modbus. And we have to make sure that both of these are installed with the latest versions. So in our case here, we've done that already and they've both been installed. So that's good. So we'll just close that off. And of course we have our ethernet uh, H, which is included in the sketch, which is defaulted in the IDE, as well as our P1AM. So our expansion modules for our P1000. Now Modbus TCP server is what the um, industrial Arduino unit will actually do. So this server actually is also can be called a slave. So what it does is it exposes the I.O. that we want to read from our client or master. In our case here, it's going to be from our Seymour Micro EA3 unit. So if we scroll down to here a bit, you'll see here that we have our Mac address here. And it's actually printed on the side of our, of our Ethernet card. So it's printed on the side of our P1AM-ETH card. And if I take a look at that, you can see here, I've taken this apart and you can see here my sticker on the side and you'll see the MAC address located right here. Now each card is going to be different. So you must take a look and copy those numbers that you see there back into your sketch. So and that's what we've done here and we've created our MAC address here. So that's our, our MAC address for our Ethernet card. Then we put an IP address, and this is going to be depending on our server, but we're going to put in 192, 168, 1, 177. And then basically there are four types of memory that we can um, expose in on Modbus, and that being the Modbus coil bits, Modbus input bits, Modbus holding registers, and Modbus input registers. So what we've done is set up uh, those here. Then our server, the port number is 50 or 502 as a default. And what we've done is, or what they've done here is set up a serial begin. And so what they do is just wait until everything gets online. And then it says the, then it prints out Modbus TCP server and module IO example. And then it basically just waits until um, our MAC address and everything is ready to go and then we start the server and it begins listening for connections from our master. 
Then if we scroll down here, we can actually see how we're configuring our, our coils or inputs or registers. And then we go into our loop. So we look for our server connections. And then what we're doing is we're taking, um, we, we process our variables here. And there we go. And then we are reading from our analog in. So basically what we're doing is we're taking our slot number one, which is our simulator eight point bit, and we're putting that out on there to, to let them everything read it. And what we're doing is we're, we're taking the output bits and we're going to write them to the relay channels, turn them on and off. Right? So that's basically the program. So the big thing to remember is our MAC address, our IP address, and that we're using Serial just to start it. So we must connect that first. Okay, so then once we're done with that, let's take a look at our Seymour Micro. And here's our Seymour Micro uh, information. And remember, we have a whole series on how to program this Seymour Micro. So in here, what we'll see is if we go to Setup, and panel manager or we can go over to function and panel manager either either way and then we go down to our ethernet port on our ea3 seymour micro you'll see that we have our ip address for our ethernet card which is the 192.168.1.177 which is the exact same we just set in our ide for our arduino then we have our 502, which is the, the port. And then we left everything else the same, or the default. Then what we do is, uh, you'll notice that if we go to the tag database, here we go, you will see our input uh, units. And the inputs are memory address one. And the first address is one. And then we go, all the way up to address number eight. So one eight. And then we have our output. Our output coils zero. That's the first one. And then you'll see that it goes all the way up to eight as well. So we're exposing the first eight bits of our channel. Then we have our first holding register uh, address. So you see it's at address memory four. It's the first one. And then we have address number two. Again, this is a read write, so we'll allow the unit is actually gonna to write to that. Okay, so we'll close that off. And you can see here, there's my input bit. And what we've done is used an indicator light on that input bit. So the indicator light comes on for input number one. Our output, there are, we have an output bit here. And what we do is we have the push button on that output, which is acting as a toggle. So if I hit it once, it turns it on, hit it again, it turns it off. And that's on output number one. And there's our tag base. So let's hit cancel on that one. And then for our actual holding registers, you can see my numeric display here. And all I'm doing is displaying that value here. And the IDE program will actually increment that uh, first holding register as it goes along and we will read that in. Okay. And then here we have a numeric entry so we can write information into our um, industrial Arduino P1AM. So it's address 4, 000, or 40,002. And here's our data entry and data display are the one of the same. And we've used a pop-up menu that we can actually change a value. So that is the entire program. So let's take a look now at our hardware that we have on this unit. And I'll just call it up here. There we go. So on our hardware, you'll notice that we do have a power supply over here. It's the Rhino, and it's supplying power both to the uh, P1AM industrial Arduino to power up our input cards that are located here, as well as we're powering up our EA3 
uh, Seymour Micro Display Unit. And this model is a T4CL. So, and it has the Ethernet communication back to our, um, our unit. And here is my P1AM EAT unit, which is actually the one that we programmed here. So this is actually communicating Modbus TCP from our client or master to our server or slave unit. It's located right here. So calling back up the uh, IDE, what we'll do is we will we can verify it, but then after verify, we can just upload that information. So we're uploading right now. And it's going to upload this into our actual unit itself. Now you'll see on the GitHub, we can download all this as well as you can download the uh, sample program that you see here for the EA3. Again, change those parameters and then you should be up and running it with a good demo of getting inputs, outputs, and registers in and out of this unit. So our upload is now done. And now what we'll do is go to our um, Seymour unit. Actually, once our upload is done, we'll see our unit here and we'll send the project panel. And there we go, we'll just save that. So it's compiling it. And now what we're going to do is transfer that over. So you see it's going to transfer it back into our screen over here. And once it's done, it comes back out. And you'll notice that we now have a timeout uh, function here. And that is because, we'll say OK for the transfer complete. That is because we said that we have to wait for our serial communication port. So here's, I'll call it my serial port. There we go, we're waiting for our, our unit to uh, take a look. It says, yes, I have slot number one. I have our simulator here, input. And on slot number two, we have our 16 uh, bit output channel right there. And now it's waiting, it's done with the setup, then it's waiting for the client and accepted the client. And our client is 192.168.1.151, which is the exact same one where we just downloaded. So we know this is the unit that's being communicated to. And now if we look at the screen, the first thing we see is that uh, holding register uh, for 40,001, it's actually incrementing and showing us that value incrementing. Next, if we turn on an output or an input here, you can see as soon as I turn it on, you can see the corresponding input light then turns on. Let's turn on like say the third one. There we go. And you can do the fourth and it turns on too. Then over on our output side, remember these are toggles. So if I turn that on, it toggles, it turns it on, the first output. If I hit it again, it turns it off, so it toggles it on and off. So let's just turn on a few of them. There we go. And you can see the corresponding eight bits that are on there. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or we want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.